on July 25, 2021, I attended the Concours de Elegance of America Car Show in Plymouth, Michigan. The highlight of the show were these four Ferrari Monzas. In this video, I will cover the history of the Monza, the unique features of each model, the new series they are a part of, what they cost, a little bit about what the process looks like in order to order one, and I'll tell you which one of these four belongs to a famous professional athlete in the United States. All of that, coming up. Ferrari introduced the Monza to the public at the 2018 Paris Motor Show. It is available in two models. The SP1 is a single-seater, and the SP2 has two seats. Only 499 are planned to be produced, and all of them are already sold to Ferrari's most exclusive collectors. Each buyer can choose if they want an SP1 or SP2. Speculation is that the two-seater will be more popular. The Monza is loosely based on the Ferrari 812 Superfast. It is powered by the same 6.5-liter naturally aspirated V12 engine with a slightly different tune. It makes 799 horsepower, 530 pound-feet of torque, and it revs to nearly 9,000 RPMs. It is only available in a 7-speed dual-clutch transmission with paddle shifters. The SP1 model has a dry weight of 3,307 pounds. The SP2 model is 3,351. Although it is based on the A12 Superfast, it is considerably lighter. It's primarily because the car has an aluminum chassis and the body is carbon fiber. In comparison, the A12 Superfast weighs about 500 pounds more. The performance is what you would expect. Amazing. It does 0 to 62 miles per hour in 2.9 seconds, 0 to 124 miles per hour in 7.9 seconds, and it has a top speed around 186 miles per hour. All the Monzas are an open-top or Barchetta design that harkens back to their racing history. Ferrari said the inspiration for this car came from the 1948 Ferrari 166MM, the 1954-750 Monza, and the 1956-860 Monza. Because they are an open-top design, they are currently not legal to be driven on public roads in the United States. Although a representative from the dealership did indicate that Ferrari is attempting to work something out with the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration to rectify that problem. The SP1 and SP2 are part of a new series of cars for Ferrari called Icona, which in English translates to Icon. Ferrari has indicated they plan to produce five models in the Icona line. The Monza SP1 and SP2 are just the first. The idea is to blend new technology into a vintage design. Icona is the fourth pillar or series for the company. The pillars of Ferrari currently breaks down as follows. Sport represents about 50% of company sales. This includes cars like the SF90 Stradale, the F8 Tributo and F8 Spider, the 812 Superfast and 812 GTS. GT represents about 40% of company sales. This includes cars like the Roma and the Portofino. Special Series is about 5% of company sales and includes cars like the 488 Pista that you see here. Icona will also represent about 5% of company sales. Of course, a fifth pillar of the company is expected to be introduced in the coming year as Ferrari plans to build its first SUV. The cost of a Ferrari Monza SP1 or SP2 is estimated to be $1.8 million or more. I would predict once you pick out your options, the price tag will soar past the $2 million mark. On this note, I had an interesting conversation with someone who is very knowledgeable about ordering a Monza. The process essentially breaks down like this. Step number one is Ferrari reaches out to you and asks, would you like to order a Monza SP1 or SP2? The person I spoke to said it is always best to say yes, or you run the risk of getting left off the list for the next special series or Icona car that Ferrari produces. Step number two is to visit your dealer or you fly to Marinello and you custom order your car. Everything is bespoke. Ferrari even partnered with two luxury brands, Loro Piana and Berluti, to create, and I quote, elegant, gentleman, driver-inspired apparel and accessories. The driver's selection includes racing overalls, jersey, helmet, 
gloves, scarf, and driving shoes. Think about that for a second. You spend $2 million on a car, and they throw in a pair of overalls. By the way, this is also when you place your initial $500,000 deposit. Step number three is when Ferrari contacts you to say your car will be built on X date. You then pay another $500,000. Step number four is when the car is finished and ready to be shipped to your dealer in the United States, you know what's coming, you pay another $500,000. And finally, in step five, when you take delivery and pay the balance, whatever that number happens to be. And the process may take more than a year before you get your car. Ferrari said they had planned to produce one Monza per day, but I'm sure the pandemic in 2020 slowed down their production schedule. In fact, one of the representatives from the dealership said they have a fifth Monza on their way to them. And these were cars that were most likely ordered sometime in 2019. Now let me cover these four cars and some of their features. It was a really nice cross-section of the Ferrari Monza, as we had two SP1s and two SP2s, each one in a different color, all very unique. First, let's start with the red SP2, with the blue stripe across the hood. You might be wondering, how do you drive a car without a front windshield? The answer that Ferrari developed is what they call a virtual windshield. The air flowing across the hood enters this opening you see here, and then is channeled 90 degree turn and straight up out of this opening you see here. That forces the flow of air to go over the top of the driver. Now from what I've read, it appears to work better the faster you drive. The passenger, of course, just gets a small wind deflector in front of them. Now let's take a listen to what the red one sounds like during startup. <laughs> The blue Monza is an SP1 with the red seat and the white stripe down the center. And this vehicle has the distinction of belonging to Houston Astros pitcher Justin Verlander. One of the representatives from the dealership indicated that uh, they had taken delivery of this car about four months ago and that Justin told them they could go ahead and hang on to it for a while. So they were happy to display it in their showroom. As you can see here, getting in and out of the vehicle can be a bit of a challenge. It does have a small door that kind of flips out of the way, but look how high that sill is that you have to step over in order to exit or enter the vehicle. Here's a close-up of one of the headlights. You notice the unique design with the line that kind of slices the headlight in two? Well, that line actually operates as your turn signal. The wheels are 21 inches all the way around. And they're shod with Pirelli P0 tires that are 31530 ZR21s. The silver SP1 with the yellow stripe across the hood, I believe is referred to as the Launch Edition, because that is the color combination that appeared on the Ferrari stand at the Paris Motor Show in 2018. The owner of the silver car is the lady you see here in the black Ferrari shirt, and she was demonstrating to a friend how the door and how the clamshell hood works. As you can see, she will come around and give him instruction that there's a handle on each side and that you bring it down to a certain level and then just drop it on the body and then it goes in place. Here you get a little better look with the hood, the door, and the trunk open. The trunk was surprisingly large considering the size of the vehicle. It uh, had more storage space than what I anticipated. If you've been wondering where the brake light is, that is that line that wraps around the body there on the top of the trunk. You'll see as she steps on the brake, you see the red light come on. You may have noticed the Ferrari shield on each side. On most cars, it's a metal plate that's embedded, but not on a Monza. On a Monza, they're reportedly hand-painted. And finally, as I move on to the black one, notice there is no outside door handle. The only way to open that door is to grab that leather strap you see on the inside of the door. As we look around the interior, the first thing that jumps out at you is this bar or beam that runs down the center of the interior, separating the driver from the passenger. Mounted on this bar is the rear view mirror, as you can see in these pictures. Next, let's look at the steering wheel. 
It'll seem familiar to most Ferrari fans. The turn signals are at the 3 and 9 position. Your headlight controls are on the left. The red button, bottom left, is your start-stop button. The dial on the bottom right is for your different driving modes. Ferrari refers to this dial as the Manatino, which is Italian for little lever. Your options here include wet, sport, race, CT off, which turns your trash control off, and CST off, which turns off all your stability control. That's the one you use if you're super brave and confident in your driving skills. The large yellow dial in the center of the dash is your tachometer. There are screens on each side. The screen on the left will show your speedometer. Now let's look at the center console controls. The three buttons along the bottom are auto and reverse for the transmission and the launch control button. The red button, of course, is for turning your hazards on and off. And above this is your climate controls. Notice the temperature dial is in Celsius and not Fahrenheit. The next set of controls are for the stereo and other settings that will show up on the right screen next to the tachometer. And above this is your cruise control. And that concludes my video of the Ferrari Monza SP1 and SP2. It was great to see these cars up close and personal, perhaps the only time in my life when I will see four of them all together. So what do you think of the Ferrari Monza? If you could afford it, would you spend $2 million on one? Drop a comment below and share your thoughts on this first Icona automobile from Ferrari. My name is Tom Straup and you've been watching Find the Right Road. If you enjoyed that video, please click the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks and we'll catch you next time.